<laughs> Man, this thing's so good, you might end up pregnant. Mom, dad, dogs, everybody, pregnant. <laughs> Then again, I'm no doctor or anything, so I don't know, probably not. Maybe that's not how it works. My parents never really explained that too well to me. Uh, hi, by the way, my name's Josh Yaravina, and welcome to Haylet RV. This is the 6845 pound Wildwood 27 rear kitchen, and it is an absolutely fantastic floor plan. It's something that it still feels towable, but it, the inside, the, the, the living area, feels like a multi-slide camper because it has some massive window coverage on this thing on both sides of the RV. So there's really no bad seat, there's no bad view in this house right here. Um, it, it, it has a, a lot of big open space and feel and awesome counter space and storage for like destination use. And in point of fact, I do think rear kitchen models like this are a little bit better used if you're gonna set up shop and stay at a destination a little bit longer because they are a little tricky when it comes to traveling access. But if you hang with me, I'm actually gonna sh uh, uh, show the slide closed and show you a couple little tricks to get through this thing. And it's little things like that. We're gonna show you the highs and the lows. Like I, I'll volunteer that I really wish this had a window in the door and it, it has a camp queen bed with room for a true queen. I wish it just had a true queen bed, but I can deal with those things when I have all of the awesome window coverage. Um, I, I can always swap a bed in, which frankly, I don't know if there's any RV that comes with a mattress that I want straight from the factory anyway. So that doesn't really confront me none, as Mr. George Thorogood might have said um, uh, when he was drinking, you know, a bourbon, a scotch, and a beer. Regardless, but we've got enhanced stability on this with jack leg stabilizers plus the uh, stable steps. We have a taller ceiling, which means I can stand in the shower at 6'3 on this thing. It has that nice big 12 volt fridge. Again, all of the counter space in the world to be able to entertain friends and family. And the Versa Lounge, baby. Because this trailer's awesome as it is, but it's this thing over here that gives it such flexibility and function. And I think actually helps make up for some of the uh, potentially arguable shortcomings that this thing has. We'll come back to this in just a second, but first, take a look at this. Again, just massive window coverage on this thing, and even though it's only a one-slide RV, because we have this huge picture window over here overlooking the door side of the camper, it feels anything but small. And how social is this? Like, we're sitting on the Versalon sofa section right now. You're straight across from the uh, recliners, you, uh, you know, you're, the, the people in the kitchen, they're not left out of the mix. And that's one of the things I love about this one is the kitchen on this. All that counter space, all that storage space. And if you're an inner, what, here's the thing. If you're one or two people, the kitchen is just really nice because you're probably going to spend a lot of time in here, right? But if you're an entertainer, everybody knows the party ends in the kitchen, right? That's where the food is. That's where the drinks is. That's where the congregation happens. So this becomes, it's a very cozy uh, secluded layout, but it can also very quickly become a, uh, a a great little entertainment hangout space because of the Versa function of the Versa lounge. You can convert it from lounge mode to just traditional sofa dinette mode. If you want to like have a full game of cards playing over here, you're doing a little craft, you just got a full-on meal going, you can flip that rear bench back around and make it do a little bit of whatever you want it to whenever you want it to. But we're still not done with this thing. Notice I, my voice goes up a couple octaves when I get excited. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm no Mariah Carey anyway, but uh, my dog does bark when I get home, which I think just means I'm a, uh, a good owner. Anyway, um, we have five of these food safe storage totes down here hidden all the way under this thing. That is 20.3 cubic foot of food safe storage in addition to everything that you see in this. You know, I, I've always felt that like each brand has something they do really, really well. I have long said that I think Coachman's one of the kings of storage. I think Wildwood with this Versa Lounge setup has really given them a run for their money. But that is seriously just scratching the surface of what's available here in this kitchen. The taller ceiling in this, the six foot nine linear interior vaulted exterior ceiling, uh, I guess ceiling and roof as it were, uh, provides them with some bigger overhead cabinet space and throwing that extra shelf in there really maximizes things. Now, when you have a corner like this and cabinets wrapping all the way around it, that, uh, you know, you got the, the left-hand cabinet right next to the microwave, that's easy to get to. The right-hand cabinet actually does snake all the way around. That being said, if you really wanted to, if it's more convenient for you, it's nothing to pop that panel out. Would you leave that there? Would you take that out? I guess I'm kind of curious. Now, 
uh, appliance space and whatnot, because this is a full wraparound backsplash. That's one of the other things I really, really like about this one, with some easy, easy reach outlets that a lot of RVs just really seem to struggle to accomplish. Notice, too, you've got uh, outlets there. We saw outlets back in what I'm going to call the coffee corner, plus we have some right down here on the side, uh, which, frankly, I think could be really cool for the person hanging out in this chair right there if he had to plug in a little phone charger or something. You could make that an awesome little phone charge station, you know. Uh, over here, we have a big pantry, buddy. Uh, Floor-to-ceiling pantry space going on, and I love how they actually include a light in it. So you can, you know, it gets dark in those. It's kind of nice to see what you're doing just a little bit here. Now, in case you're wondering about travel access to this rear kitchen, hang with us. Uh, before we step outside, after we've concluded the rest of our interior video, we will actually uh, close the slide up and show you road mode. And I've got a way around some otherwise potentially limiting travel accessibility in this one. That is a 12-volt uh, a DC compressor fridge, by the way. That's uh, Wildwood was actually the first mainstream manufacturer to standardize that. And over here, triple drawers down to the floors. And this is what they call not the Lazy Susan, but the Active Susie. Plus, below the sink, I don't care uh, if you decide you got big pots and pans. You want to add a shelf in there. Uh, you could very easily put like a little organizer setup or just a big wastebasket. Awesome spacer. And notice, too, notice the little toe cutaway down at the bottom so you can actually belly right up to the bar here so that you don't have that like annoying back pain <laughs> you know it's just little details like that now we've seen it all wide open i want to show you this thing all closed up in privacy mode or sun blocker mode as it were now down here if you look at this i can absolutely acknowledge the folks who say that entertainment center is so old school it's a 90 degree neck record this is a fail I can acknowledge that. I would offer that not every single RV is made with a pure focus on just the entertainment. Um, that being said, if you notice, these chairs right here, these big pushback recliners, they're free floating. You can easily turn them any way you want. Remember that you have the, uh, the, the lounge function on the Versa Lounge, which helps you kind of angle toward the TV. I'll actually show you that in just a second. First of all, while we're over here, See the little, uh, you know, electric space heating. I think I'm going to call it a Tootsie Toaster, unless you're all the way over here right next to it with your feet sticking out. Then it's going to be a footsie fryer. But new for 22, the little accent light down below that, it's a tiny thing. I acknowledge. But it is a very nice kind of quality of life enhancement that goes along with the white accent light up here above the slide instead of the uh, Luke, you know, Skywalker lightsaber lighting, I guess. Or was it, uh, I suppose Obi-Wan had the blue saber. Luke's was primarily green, correct? Because, you know, it was, his, it was his father's. His father used it to murder a bunch of children. That, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be a downer. That's just what happened in Star Wars. Never mind. Episode 3. Um, I'm not a nerd or anything. Anyway, did you also get to see, when you black out all those things, it's per, it, this Versa Lounge can convert into one full super slide mega sleeper right here. You know the problem with a lot of jackknives and, and common two-bench booth dinettes? They don't fit adults. If an adult came over, you'd have to throw an air mattress on the floor, which frankly is not a bad option. It gets a, a lot of people like, I don't like that, but there's nothing wrong with it. This can convert into like, I don't know, I haven't measured it, but it's got to be close to like a 12-foot bed. Or you can do, like, again, a little half-and-half half kind of action. Now, I've got it back in lounge mode, so we can look at the entertainment, but something I'm at a better angle to show you here is even when it's in lounge mode, especially if it's just one or two of you, you always maintain a neat little, uh, you know, dining space right here. And what's cool is think about its orientation. We're talking about the entertainment. Those chairs can turn. The dinette is organically, perfectly facing here. And the way that this lounge works, um, obviously, if you're stuffed up in that corner, yeah, it's going to be a neck wrecker. You're going to want a very aggressive swing arm to see it. I don't think that's going to be your primary seating space in this one for entertainment purposes, though. I think you're going to use those two recliners. I think you're going to be at that dinette having a bite to eat. And I think you're going to be right here with your back against the Versa Lounge, kind of basically facing straight toward that slide side breeze window right there. Uh, and, I, and I think that this is how you're going to be most of the time. So I get that at a glance, the entertainment center looks like it's, it's not awesome. But when you're sitting over here like this, it ain't bad. I mean... Name another, it, it, I will say this, it's better than anyone else I've seen who makes this floor plan. Oh yeah, another neat little new for 22 feature is our main living room lighting is actually all on a dimmer switch here. So, uh, you know, if it is early morning, late at night, you want to just run the accent lights below the fireplace, above the slide, dim those lights down, or 
let's say, uh, you've got, I don't know, you've got kids and you're using this as a trailer temporarily until they get out of the house. Or if you're grandpa and grandma, you got uh, like grandkids and they don't want the, uh, I don't know, the guy in the dark that chases you and gives you nightmares to come get you. Well, you can keep him away with those lights. It's amazing how weak he is to lighting. Kind of like that old movie, Little Monsters, with Howie Mandel and uh, Fred Savage. It doesn't take a whole lot of light, and they just turn into a pile of clothes. Now, apologies here. Uh, in the bathroom space, you see a little bit of what looks like pink Kool-Aid on the shower pan there. That's just antifreeze that's dribbled out a little bit in transit. That nice 30 by 36 inch shower, again, being extra tall, means that somebody like me can stand in there without their head being banged up. And if I dip down a little bit here and my knees start popping and locking like a hip-hop dancer, you see that is actually a nice little radius track at the top. That extra headroom, that extra elbow room, that's something I know that I really like. I really like that. Um, and if you're curious about things like, oh man, I really wish it had a porcelain toilet, that's the stuff that can be swapped out very easily. What I appreciate is the way that this is positioned and the way it's designed is very what I call fluffy friendly. And in case you're curious what the view from the toilet looks like, this is what you're going to be seeing. First of all, I like how this is all wide open right here. Like if you had like a, a, a wastebasket or a little toilet paper stand or something, that'd be the perfect spot for it. Just like in the kitchen, we have a little toe kick so you can belly right up to the bar. And I love that little slat work. That's something that they had been doing in the uh, Lodge and Grand Lodge series that I love that they're bringing to the uh, these bigger Wildwoods. Now, uh, we have a full mirror with that cool little backsplash all the way up the wall back there. And you see that there's, uh, I mean, that could be your, your, you know, your soap, your body wash, some extra towel storage if you roll them up over there. But this thing has like a, a funky corner over here. That is actually one of the best parts of the bedroom. <laughs> Which wouldn't you know it, as we come through the hallway, is the next item on our agenda. There's a lot of stick and tin camper brands that once you get to the bedroom, it's like just a bed and maybe the two wardrobe towers. What I want to show you in here are all the extra little details that Wildwood has put into this. I would argue that they have potentially one of, if not the best bedroom in their class in terms of its thought, its detail, and its appointments. You notice how we still have the blackout roller shades here in the bedroom. So many brands. If they give you good shades, they only do it in the living room. Then we get like metal mini blinds back here, which I guess is okay, but I think those roller shades are better. And I mentioned right at the start of this video, this is a Camp Queen. That's just all Wildwood uses. I think a lot of people will agree factory mattresses are not amazing. Most people, I think, are going to agree. Actually, there's a lot of people say, I wish manufacturers would just give me no mattress and let me just get my own since theirs are bad anyway. Okay, fine. I totally understand and respect that. And if you're going to do that, at least they, you know, didn't ding you real hard for a fancy mattress that you'd end up replacing. Uh, that little camp queen, you could swap out for a true queen and still have room to walk around it. Now, one of the other really cool kind of new for 22 features is this right here. Handy little laundry basket so that you have a place for yesterday's clothes now that it's today. Then when you lift that easy, easy lift bed, you see all of those individual little storage cube organizer guys right there. I, I love those things because that's really functioning, I think, as our dresser space in this bedroom. Um, we have the, the cabinet overhead, sure. We have these things, plus we have a closet yet that you haven't seen. But those dresser cubes are really, really handy. Then we've got this. Uh, Wildwood calls it their CPAP storage pockets. The little cutaway jobs in the side there. Obviously, if uh, you, know, you are a CPAP user, that gives you a nice little place for your hoses and stuff to be able to run in and out. And you can keep your machine like right next to you, but out of the way during the day. Or if you're not a CPAP user, just a phone charger. Or... Frankly, if you're claustrophobic, it's a nice little window to give you like at least the, the sensory and the perception of some breathing space. But again, that little corner in the shower, that's this guy over here. And this is awesome. This is what I love about this is that it gives us all of the extra like storage of a closet slide without the weight and the cost of a closet slide. The extra little shelf down there, I think would make like a, a, a cool little kind of shoe storage place potentially. Um, some people will ask, ooh, uh, are there washer dryer hookups in there? Not in a uh, stick and tin Wildwood. But as we start getting into their laminated Heritage Glen series, you will actually start encountering some uh, functions like that. Now for road mode, we obviously have the entry door right here with a hallway that takes us straight to the bed and bathroom. So we're definitely nap and crap accessible. The question on this one really becomes what happens with the kitchen. And by default, not much. The initial look you give this thing 
You look at this and go, oh man, travel access on that kitchen is a total fail. Remember that every RV is made for a different purpose. I, I said that I think this is a really good option for a destination. That being said, what if you're traveling and you just absolutely have to get back to that fridge? Is there a little way you can do it? And the short answer is yes, if you're just a little creative. We're going to really leverage the fact that the Versa Lounge is rather versatile here. We're going to pop that floating backer off, get the table out of the way, and then you can actually just step, step right on through, and you can get your way back here. Now, you obviously don't want to do a, you know, the hacksaw Jim Duggan foot stomp to get through there, and the fridge door is not completely open. I think it can be argued, it, especially when the door's not closing on us, though, it can open enough. But what if you really, really had to get that fridge door all the way open. Well, because this is a rack and pinion slide system, you are able to partially deploy the slide like I'm showing you right here, not completely open it and be able to access, you know, everything effectively. And then if we do that, you see that only adding a couple inches and eliminates the need to do the uh, creative Versa Lounge stuff. And we can obviously fully access the fridge here. Now, again, we can we can keep doing this exercise ad nauseum until we get to the pantry. But by the time that's available, we've basically got the slide completely open. And you can see, just for a point of reference, we've opened it so little, the window in the slide is still not even like exposed outside of the trailer. You can still see through it to the inside of the RV. You know, it's not it's not a perfect solution, but I think it is a, a viable one. All right, so let's talk towing. We've got something here with one slide. You hear 6,800 pounds. By default, to a lot of people, that sounds very half-ton towable. And to that, my answer is mm, maybe. It is a pretty decent length. By the time, with all the cargo space in this, you you can you can really add some weight to that dry weight with cargo. I really encourage you to try to consider your loaded weight uh, as opposed to just the empty weight. And again, I always post like the maximum weight capacity that these have with cargo plus empty weight at the beginning of the video for you. Um, the uh, We also post those specs in the video description if you need more time to review them. I know that some people on there, depending on what device you're using, when you hit pause, it darkens the screen and makes stuff hard to read. So I always have it written in a couple places for you. So is it half ton towable? Maybe. It depends on the specific capacities of the truck. Three quarter ton and up, you'll jerk this thing all around the nation, uh, just really no sweat. Now, a couple little small details up here below this big diamond plate. Uh, you have a uh, battery disconnect switch right behind the double uh, battery tray. And I see those little yellow things. We'll come back to those in just a second. Log that in the old memory bank back there. But we talked about diamond plate. The entire nose of this thing is a 67% thicker 0.06 inch aluminum versus a 0.024 inch like you see on the sidewalls. Although the darker color bands that we're looking at, those are actually a 0.03. So even those are thicker. Uh, the reason being darker color bands will absorb more heat from the sun. They're a little more prone to heat expansion and contraction. So they use a thicker metal on those to help compensate for that. Real smart stuff. Um, you see the, uh, the little hex nut adapter for the uh, the jack legs on the right hand side of the screen right there. That's a really cool thing Wildwood does standard on all these. You just hook that uh, right up to your cordless drill and you have what we like to call the cordless jack system right there, brother. Plus, uh, if you're, you know, playing cornhole or something like that or what? what's your favorite yard game? Do you, do you bring yard games with you when you go camping? That right there is an awesome little uh, scorekeeper's board. That's a dry erase board little update that they put into these. Um, as we uh, work our way back here, I want to mention, this is a big awning, but you notice how, I mean, there's a chunk of the trailer that's not covered. I think the part of the trailer that matters is covered, and that is a 20-foot awning. I think that is a, a very good, reasonable patio space for, uh, for any trailer, really, um, especially when you look at everything you have under here. First of all, that anti-slam door, it can fully open. You can karate chop like Miss Piggy, that thing, all the way open, and you're not going to smash your awning arm. Our outside speakers are right down here at patio level. They're not up high where you're blowing the neighbors away, brother. Um, the uh, There's a little outside TV hookup, and of course, the in the corner of the kitchen counter, where you really can't get to it from the inside because... You know, it, the L shape, you can't really get to it from the kitchen. And uh, from the opposite side of the kitchen peninsula, the chair is in the way. And you don't always want to wrestle that. So I said, why don't we make it so instead of having to wrestle a chair, uh, instead of having to get on your hands and knees to get stuff, we just open it up outside. You got a handy little mini fridge out here. Uh, this, I want to mention, is 110 
only. It's another thing, I really think that this is a camper that's going to do very well in parks. Like, they have, for, new for 22, uh, a factory roof solar prep uh, system on this. You can add some solar to this now. Um, a little late to the game, perhaps, but hey, at least they're doing it. You know, it doesn't matter what they didn't do before. It matters that they're doing it now, right? Um, a lot of people here in the Midwest park camp, which is why you see us at Haylet RV with a lot of 12-volt fridges without solar packages. Around here, people don't need them. They just like the faster cooling, the travel function, and, uh, you know, the travel safety that goes along with those things. Uh, this model right here is one of, like, most full Wildwoods, not the X-Lights. Uh, let me, how can I say this differently? I'm sorry. All Wildwoods have a fully walkable roof. The full Wildwoods often have a uh, rear wall ladder prep. This is one of those. They don't offer a factory ladder, but there are backers in the wall to add one if you are so inclined. Now, remember the little Bananarama yellow bars that we saw there? Well, down below here, those are the strong arm stabilizer jack legs right there or the jack leg stabilizers, if I could speak coherently today, which seems I am certainly not capable of doing, but uh, those are legit. Those are straight legitness. Uh, MC Hammer called them too legit, and uh, he, he was unable to quit when it came to those things. Uh, that's actually what that song is about. A lot of people don't know. Too Legit to Quit was actually about JT strong arm stabilizers. Um, maybe, I don't know, I haven't verified that, but it makes sense. The uh, idea there, though, is that between the stable steps taking the herky-jerky wiggle jiggle out of the RV when people come and go, and then those things taking more of the herky-jerky wiggle jiggle out of the RV as people walk around, this thing's going to feel like it's on a concrete pad. Uh, those big panoramic windows just, again, giving us awesome views of everything. But look at the little boxy bracket kind of things at the top corners of the slides. This is slide awning ready. So uh, if that is something that you're looking to add onto the RV, they've made it simpler and easier. It'll save you some labor time right there, which I think is uh, very cool. Um, now all full, uh, well at this point, Wildwoods across the board, I believe, yeah, actually have all enclosed bellies. They're not all heated though. This one is, this is not just the enclosed accessibility with those cool sectionalized service panels. It is also forced air heated. Now what that's going to do is just help you extend your camping season and enhance your comfort in the spring and fall seasons. This is not necessarily winter rated. I've not seen a trailer in this class tested and proven down to zero degrees. That being said, if it's like gonna dip uh, you know, into the, the 20s or something overnight and then come back above freezing tomorrow. A trailer like this with that enclosed belly, as long as you are running the furnace, will help you. Interesting note on that. Here's another little pro tip for you from your old Uncle Josh at Haylet RV. If it's really, really, really cold, you actually kind of don't want to run that electric fireplace. And you're going, what? And I get how that sounds totally, totally backwards. You're like, wouldn't the fireplace add extra heat? Not to the underbelly. Like, you and me, we can always put on a pair of slippers and, and a hoodie. Your holding tanks can't do that. So if you're running that electric fireplace back here, you could actually be tricking the thermostat into thinking it's warmer, in a sense, than it is, and effectively shutting off the heating into your underbelly. Now, whether it was intentional or not, one thing that works out well here is that electric space heater is not like right next to or right below the thermostat. So you would have a very delayed effect on there. But if it's gonna be really screaming cold, it's actually a little bit better for you to put on a pair of slippers on a hoodie and just chug that furnace. Like if there's a cold snap that the weatherman got wrong, can you imagine, I'm sorry, um, weather person, right? Weather person? Um, see, I, I, I'm technically, I guess, uh, I've been called an elder millennial generation, generation Y, the lost generation. Uh, but I identify as a hot pocket. So if the um, weather person gets it wrong and you have to really chug the furnace, you'll make it through the night. And then tomorrow you can take the nip off uh, when it's in like, say, the uh, you know the 30s or 40s with the electric space heater when you're not worried about extra uh, tank protection there. So as I always ask you, please leave me a couple comments. Let me know what you like about her, what you would change given the opportunity. Cherokee makes a very similar camper. J-Flight makes a very similar camper. There's a lot of people that build a floor plan like this. This is a very long running, well-established model. And it's like, a, it's like a crocodile, like an alligator. It's just so good. It hasn't really had to change a whole lot over the years. It's a living RV fossil. 
except it's a brand new 22 living fossil. I don't know. I feel like there's something there, but I didn't nail it. I'll work that out of my own time. In the meantime, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone.